Hello, I am Dave Ortega with Somerville Media Center, and uh, thank you for joining us for another business update. Uh, I'm happy to be joined with today Matt Gray, the owner and founder of Neighborhood Produce in Somerville. Hi, Matt. How are you doing? Hey, doing well. Thanks, Dave. Also joining me on this call today is Bert Holdredge, who is the general manager of Winter Hill Brewing Company. How are you doing, Bert? Uh, doing well, Dave. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you both. And um, for anybody that's kind of kept up with the business updates that we've been doing, uh, this is just a way that we here at Somerville Media Center are tr trying to fit the needs of the community at this moment. And uh, that includes, you know, highlighting businesses and their needs right now uh, during the current COVID emergency. Um, so I want to start off asking you both, um, how are you doing and how, how are your employees doing? Um, we'll start off with Matt, and then uh, and then I want to hear from Bird. So, Matt, how you doing? Yeah, uh, I'm doing pretty good, uh, but pretty tired <laughs> as well. Um, you know, for our business, uh, we were deemed uh, essential service, so we've been pretty busy throughout all of this, trying to keep the neighborhood fed. And since we're a small store, and a lot of people walk there, we've sort of become a community resource. Um, but it's required. A very much a quick change in business and um and so it, it's my wife and i and then a full-time employee and then a bunch of part-time people and um you know we've all been working all the time um but we've actually been in a position where we've hired over the last few weeks um people to help out at the store um so it's been we're doing good employees are doing good everyone is healthy we're trying to make sure everyone gets rest um appropriately and yeah just and to stay healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we found that um like the the business day, the regular business day has been disrupted and people are are working almost 7 days a week and and we'll come back to that. Um and I want to hear from 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 Bert how you doing over there at Winter Hill Brewing. Uh everyone's uh safe and healthy so far, uh which is a positive. Um a few of us are still working. Unfortunately, you know, most of our staff has been furloughed. Um, so morale is, is what it is. We're hoping to get back to business as usual as soon as it's safe to do so. Mm. And that's a good, that's a good segue into my next question about how different, how businesses are being forced to adapt with the business interruption due to the, the, the shutdown and quarantine. Um, so how, how, how are, you, how are you adapting over there in Winter Hill? Um, well, We've pretty much had to go from a you know full service like brew pub to you know rapidly overnight changing to more to go uh, prepared foods, um, beer to go, essentials. I guess. I mean, we're fortunate that we're an essential business. We're trying to provide something essential. You know, uh, offering foods that you can take and bake so you can avoid a trip to the grocery store or whatever. And uh, you know, everybody's drinking these days, so. Uh, selling beer as well. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and Matt, how how have you uh, adapted with the new uh, the new world? Yeah, I mean it's not that different than sort of you know what Bert was talking about. It's you, know, you have a regular grocery store. People are coming in, they're shopping, they're doing their thing. Then all of a sudden, you have to first we limited people and limited what they could do in the store, and then we limited people all together to where we shop for people. So they come up to the front, and we. And then also all the, the online ordering, um, which has really just made the business completely a different business model altogether than what we were just six weeks ago. Mm. Um, but I do have to say that the Winter Hill Brewing food and beer pickup has been like a lifeline for us. So uh, we're always we're always trying to hit that up. So it's been great. That's great. And the Winter Hill Brewing, I know Somerville uh, expanded to allow certain restaurants to carry groceries as well. Is that is that something that you're offering at the moment? For uh, we're not at the moment. Um, the thought has like crossed our our minds for sure, but uh, right now managing the the to go business has been enough. And you know we also distribute to liquor stores and, and restaurants, so uh, we're just trying to stay focused on that sort of stuff right now. Yeah. 
And what throughout throughout this, I mean, you mentioned, yeah, this is week six or seven of this. Uh, it's hard to keep track. What's been the the best source of information for your business? Uh, I know initially you had the we had the CARES Act and and um, the payroll protection, which has been found to be severely flawed. <laughs> and so now, like this is the, the the next the next wave of that is supposed to have uh, actual protections for for small businesses. But um, as this information comes out, um, what's what's been the most helpful for your own small business? Um, we could start with with you, Bert. Um, I mean, the mayor's mayor in the city of Somerville has been great. Uh, keeping everyone up to up to speed on on the new regulations and 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 things like that, and uh, the mayor's office as well, or the uh, Marty's office, mm. uh, governor's office as well. Um, I don't know. I mean, the news is changing every day. The the loan stuff. There's a lot of stuff out there that's helpful. Uh, the first the first round of it seemed to dry dry up pretty quick. So you know we're hoping you know, we're considered for the next round. Um, and you, man? Yeah, well, um, you know, it's kind of the same thing. The city of Somerville has been great with keeping up with um, guidelines, protocols, um, you know, the face mask, whatever is changing, as, as well as the state government, um, especially for our store, just because we're trying to do what we do in a safe manner and keep it going, in a sense. And, uh and it's changing a lot. You know, I don't have a background in, in in public health or anything. So, you know, it's changed a lot as we've moved along from the first messaging being, you know, face masks aren't really helpful to now it's going to be mandatory. So, um, yeah, so the, the city has been good, though, with constant messaging, um, pretty responsive to emails. Um, as you could imagine, they're busy, too, um, but, but pretty solid. And mm -hmm. the state, of course, putting out guidelines regularly. You know. And are you are you in touch with uh, business associations or anything like that? Or, um... Um, in, in a sense, I belong to a, a national network of natural food stores called Infra, and they've been keeping everyone up to date on best practices and guidelines as well, as well as keeping us up to date on any kind of supply chain issues, which has been interesting to watch. Um, because this is this whole thing has really wrecked the existing supply chains. So you see all these shortages in flour or eggs and yeast and things that that are coming down the line. So we're trying to keep on top of that stuff so that we kind of know what to tell people when they can't get things that they regularly would get. And and stuff like uh, a delivery schedule, like that's that's obviously been an upset um, from from the pre-COVID days. It, are how how has it been managing stuff like deliveries, like incoming deliveries? Yeah, yeah. We've had to. We've every week now we're finally settling into a routine um, for like the last two weeks. But up until then, we were kind of having a new business model every week, and we were changing our hours around. Um, so we're now we're closed on Wednesdays and Thursdays because we needed those days to both sanitize the store, but also just receive in all of the product that we could in the past do during regular business hours, but because of both volume, supply chain issues. Um, we don't know when the delivery is going to come in exactly. And also just, you know, we have to always be thinking about the safety of employees. And, you know, we yeah. have a small store. And so it's, yeah, it's just, it feels, can feel tight. It's good not having any customers in there, but even employer to employee can be, can be tight. So we had to close for two days a week. Mm. And, and and it, hours. So. Mm. And then Bert, um, what sort of um, adjustments have you had to make um, and, and how stuff like the supply chain for you and deliveries, how's, how's that uh, been affected? And how have you adapted? I mean, our, uh, our deliveries to liquor stores and whatnot um, has been about the same, you know, um, in terms of receiving in in-house, you know, we're, we're, we're not open nearly as much as we normally would be, you know, typically we're open six and a half days a week, but now we're, we've shortened that to three days a week, you know, six hours at a time and kitchen staff is in here, you know, prepping uh, sometimes, but you know, deliveries sometimes show up and no one's here. So, uh, you know, there's been a little bit of uh, miscommunication and, and things like that, that have come along. Mm. Bumps, but uh and what's 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 your biggest concern right now i don't 
don't know how soon things get back to normal, I guess. I mean, a lot of, a lot of the breweries are, are treading water, you know, and just trying to do what they can to, to keep some revenue coming in to pay the bills. Um, but, you know, our model is, is more based on a brew pub, you know, than it is distribution. So we've definitely had to shift away from the brew pub thing. And, and there's, there's some things, you know, would be nice to be able to like package beer in house, you know, on a, on a canning line, but we, we just don't have room to do that sort of thing. So we've had to shift some of our production off site, and we'll see, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Matt, same question. What's, what's your biggest concern at this moment? Um, yeah, it would be just space at our current location. It's just, it's kind of tight. Like I was talking about with, with, um, just making sure that we can continue to operate in a safe manner. Um, and I, I'm generally just concerned about supply chain issues and, um, shortages, which seems like it's fine for now. Um, but there's, you know, talk of produce as we get into the produce season and coming out of California, less people picking, less people shipping, less people driving vehicles. And, um, so yeah, so I worry about that for the future to see mm-hmm. where we're at. Yeah. And, um, What's the best way for for summer villains to help out small businesses like yours right now, um, Matt? Yeah, um, you know, I mean, the, the community has been amazing. Uh, so, you know, we're all working there all the time. So, you know, people have been just very supportive with kind words and um, and and making sure and very understanding as we <laughs> change our schedule constantly and are up in different hours than we are normally. Um, it's kind of surprised me just how open people are. So I think that's the most helpful thing is just to be understanding that we're all in the business community trying to figure this out as we go. Yeah, we've, we've found that as well that like, um, because we're organizing a lot of uh, online teaching and, and uh, webinar style workshops and people are very, very forgiving um, with, you know, with adjusting to new flows like that. Um, and Bert, same same question to you. What's what's the best way for summer villains to help out small businesses like yours right now? I mean, the community's been amazing supporting us, you know, uh, with all the changes and 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 very understanding, you know, of, of things, you know, things changing so quickly and day to day. So uh, we we couldn't really ask for anything more. I mean, we're in a great great spot community wise. Uh, people are mature and you know. And their dollars locally uh, so that helps mm, for sure and uh and finally uh i just want to ask um what's the best what's the best way that people can reach you a website um should they call in um how can people get a hold of uh of you over at winter hill uh instagram and facebook has probably been the quickest way to get a hold of us but our, our info account uh info at winterhillbrewing.com you know we're on email and social media all the time, uh, making sure we're getting back to people. Can't afford to miss people these days. So, yeah. That's true. And, uh, and Matt, same, same, same opportunity to plug here for you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, same thing as for, um, Instagram is a great way to get a hold of us and, um, just ask kind of questions, whatever. Um, we're kind of there, like I said, we're a community resource. So, um, and also our website, we constantly update that as well. And that's, um, nbrhoodproduce.com. And, uh, and there you can find a leak link to our like online shopping site as well. Um, but yeah, both of those, we try to keep updated with, with different changes. So, um, yeah, so I just wanted to, to thank our staff. They've been just working constantly really hard and just being able to get food out of the community and both our existing staff and then all the new people who came in it's just really amazing people and uh just wanted to send out a thank you to them all right well well i want to thank uh both of you for for speaking with me today and uh giving some insight into how how things are looking here at uh like i said week six or seven depending on on where you started with this (laughs) matt gray the owner and founder of neighborhood produce thanks for speaking with me thank you and Bert Holdredge, the general manager at Winter Hill Brewing Company. Thank you for speaking with me. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. Good too. Thanks.